What are the reasons for the Taliban's desire for nuclear weapons and atomic power? What are the reasons that encourage the Taliban to seek nuclear weapons? In response to this important question, we must point out the following factors. Consolidation of power. One of the most important reasons that can indicate such action by the Taliban regime is the consolidation of governmental power in the world. Today, access to nuclear weapons is one of the most crucial deterrent factors against the invasion of countries, as we can observe in the Russia-Ukraine war. A clear example of the idea of maintaining government with a nuclear bomb is North Korea, which, according to the ruling regime's claims, can be a guarantee against foreign threats, especially in the face of the United States. However, it is worth mentioning that nuclear weapons cannot protect governments internally. For example, we can refer to the fall of the Soviet Union. The USSR was a country that, despite having nuclear arsenals and the Tsar bomber, collapsed in 1991 due to economic reasons, ideology, nationalist sentiments of the people, loss of beliefs, and welfare lag compared to the lives of people in other countries, as well as a collapse of leadership power. Nuclear weapons were first tested by America in July 1945. Now after 79 years, nine countries possess this weapon as follows. How can the Taliban acquire nuclear weapons? Understanding the reasons and motivations behind the Taliban's possession of nuclear weapons may lead to the question of how this group could access such dangerous arms. Weapons that even owning a few of them can pose a significant threat. Several possibilities can be considered in this regard. Accessing nuclear weapons through collaboration with other terrorist groups. One of the primary ways the Taliban could acquire nuclear weapons is by purchasing them through collaboration with other terrorist groups. An important player in this context is the Tehriki Taliban Pakistan, which possesses nuclear capabilities within Pakistan. While the Tehriki Taliban Pakistan is distinct from the Afghan Taliban, both groups share close ties, and the Taliban's rise to power in Afghanistan in August 2021 has further strengthened their ideological alliance. There is a possibility that the Tehriki Taliban Pakistan, through actions such as insurgency, attacks on nuclear warehouses, kidnapping nuclear scientists, and similar activities, could provide the Afghan Taliban with the knowledge to develop nuclear weapons. Buying nuclear weapons. Another commonly observed strategy among terrorist groups is the buying and selling of weapons, drugs, and other commodities which could also be employed to acquire nuclear weapons. Collaboration and purchase of nuclear weapons from North Korea. Another significant option to mention in this video is the collaboration between the Taliban and North Korea, specifically with Kim Jong-un. Speculation arises after reports indicate that a secret delegation of eight Taliban members visited North Korea to discuss nuclear weapons technology. It is worth noting that Afghanistan has had a long-term nuclear energy program and was once a member of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, with a nuclear laboratory established at Kabul University. Afghanistan was among the first 23 countries that became a member of the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, in 1957, corresponding to 1335 AH. Among the important goals of this organization is the growth and development of peaceful nuclear techniques and its non-use in military fields, as well as taking necessary measures to promote research, development, and practical implementation of atomic energy for peaceful purposes. Considering the Taliban's disregard for international sanctions over the past 2.5 years, political and economic sanctions may not deter their pursuit of this goal. However, certain pressure mechanisms could act as deterrents including direct military threats from the United States, the formation of a military coalition, and airstrikes or naval attacks on high-ranking Taliban authorities, similar to what occurred in late 2001. What was the reaction of prominent figures to the Taliban's claim of attempting to acquire nuclear weapons? The claim of the Taliban's pursuit of a nuclear bomb was first raised by Rahmatullah Nabil, 
the former head of Afghan national security at the 11th Herat Security Conference and has since elicited a great deal of reaction. Some of the statements made in response to this claim are Military expert Asadullah Nadim. Asadullah Nadim, a military affairs expert regarding the Taliban's efforts to acquire nuclear weapons, states This claim is completely impossible, both theoretically and practically. Theoretically, the production of an atomic bomb requires highly advanced technology. Additionally, various countries' access to nuclear weapons is under serious international scrutiny. On the other hand, Afghanistan is very far from acquiring such technology. Furthermore, nuclear weapon delivery would require either an aircraft or a missile system, considering that even India and Pakistan do not have aircraft capable of carrying atomic bombs, it is implausible to expect the Taliban to obtain a nuclear weapon. Atomic physics professor Tahir Sharani. Tahir Sharani, a professor of atomic physics at the University of Toronto in Canada, expresses, as someone who oversaw Afghanistan's nuclear energy authority for 2.5 years, I must say that even before the Taliban's rise, Afghan experts lacked the capacity and knowledge to develop such weapons, despite the authority having qualified specialists, both qualitatively and quantitatively. Based on the information received in the last two years, fundamental changes have occurred within this organization. Currently, it is out of the control and management of the directors of this department and is directly under the command of Kandahar, Hibatula Akunzada. At present, I do not have precise information, but if neighboring countries and their specialists intend to assist the Taliban in this matter, the conditions for producing such weapons in Afghanistan might be established over the long term. At present, I do not have precise information, but if neighboring countries and their specialists intend to assist the Taliban in this matter, the conditions for producing such weapons in Afghanistan might be established over the long term. It is also worth mentioning that along with a group of Afghan nuclear specialists who have left the country, some individuals active in this field are still present in Afghanistan. Additionally, some specialists from other countries have been recruited by the Taliban to work in this department. My greatest concern arises from their chemical activities because it appears that the individual in charge of this section is a chemistry specialist. This department also actively controlled biological and chemical weapons. Thus, it's possible that they may plan destructive agendas in this sector in the absence of the International Atomic Energy Agency. Sohail Shaheen, head of the Islamic Emirates political office in Qatar. Suhail Shaheen, the head of the political office of the Islamic Emirate in Qatar, outright denies this claim, stating, I completely reject this claim. It is not true. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan is focused on reconstructing the country from the ruins of 20 years of occupation, not on a nuclear arms race. Recently, a member of the US Congress claimed that the Taliban had sent its representative to North Korea to acquire nuclear weaponry. What are the risks if the Taliban gain access to nuclear weapons? It is not a far-fetched hypothesis that the Taliban may turn to nuclear and chemical weapons in the coming decades to maintain their power and system. Therefore, at the end of this section, we will explore hypotheses about the dangers that may arise should the Taliban gain access to atomic weapons. The proliferation of atomic and chemical weapons among terrorist groups one of the most dangerous consequences of the Taliban accessing nuclear weapons is the transfer of that knowledge among other terrorist groups, including Al-Qaeda and their allies. This could escalate the scale of conflicts and sensitivities of terrorist groups, especially for the countries in that region, and the casualties caused by these weapons could be deadlier and more enduring. It is notable that the Taliban currently have overt and covert communications with various terrorist groups, of which the most important include Al-Qaeda, tehrik e taliban Pakistan, the Haqqani Network, the Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan, and the East Turkestan Islamic Movement. Threat to the national security of neighboring countries. One of the Taliban's recent actions has been the establishment of jihadi schools, large and small across Afghanistan. The educational nature of these schools is still unclear, 
it is perceived that these schools, under the guise of teaching religious sciences, promote extremist beliefs and Taliban ideology. On the other hand, the Taliban is the first regime to employ suicide bombers in its army. Previous actions and statements from Taliban leaders regarding military attacks against Iran and the conquest of Tehran and Khorasan, depicting half of Pakistan's land as part of Afghanistan's map, or imposing Sharia globally through foreign jihad, as stated by Hibatullah Ahunzada. Such actions clearly pose threats to the neighboring countries and could, if tensions escalate, encourage extreme Taliban groups to use these weapons. The Taliban's bolder stance, the Taliban's bolder stance with access to nuclear weapons is not far from reality. This can be seen practically in the behavior of North Korea. The Taliban becoming bolder with the acquisition of nuclear weapons happens in various ways. For example, disregard for international laws, increasing border tensions and threatening other countries, irresponsibility in the use of weapons and acts that may be carried out against its own people or other nations. It is crucial for the international community to prevent the potential threat of the Taliban's access to nuclear or chemical weapons and to remain vigilant on this issue. Measures include imposing pressures and sanctions, diplomatic actions, increasing the security of arsenals and nuclear centers, especially in Pakistan, and striving to restore the International Atomic Energy Agency's oversight of Afghanistan's nuclear activities.